Jaundice affects two-thirds of newborns around the world. 10% of those cases require some kind of treatment. If they don't receive therapy, it can lead to lifelong brain damage or even, or even death. The solution is shine blue light on as much of the baby's surface as possible. Why is that hard? We know how to generate bright light. The issue is, how do you do it in the context of the developing world? My name is Timothy Prestero. I'm one of the founders of Design That Matters. What we do is we find the world's best social enterprises that are making a difference in developing countries. We design new products and services that make them more effective. The biggest difference between design and engineering is as an engineer, you can say, well, they're using it wrong or they didn't read the manual. In the world of design, there's no such thing as a dumb user. There are only dumb products. The question that we're trying to solve is how do you make a phototherapy device that's hard to use wrong? We interview doctors and nurses overseas. We found one who said, you know, the baby, when it's lying under the lights, looks cold. So what I do is I put a blanket over the baby. Uh, well, now it's not getting any phototherapy at all. So Firefly has phototherapy from above and below. One of the difficulties of designing Firefly was we wanted to really design it for the third world context, which means that we didn't want to have any moving parts or any openings for bugs to get in. So for this device, we were able to draft up a lot of engineering concepts about how to seal the device, and then once it's sealed, how do we manage the fact that it still creates heat. We're actually able to come up with a system where the base of Firefly allows the heat to slowly dissipate through a heat sink that we installed in the bottom, out the back, um, and away from the child. SolidWorks really helped us um, when we created a prototype and brought it to Vietnam, and people kept on telling us, oh my gosh, this top light, it's way too low. We can't get a baby in and out. And there was this big aha moment, so we were able to just go into SolidWorks, just change where we'd put one plane, and the whole model changed with it. When we're dealing with the developing world context, it's very difficult for people to understand kind of vague ideas. Even if you have a picture, it's hard for people to understand that. With a tool like SolidWorks Composer, I'd be able to show them exactly what we're talking about, a CAD model of it, a three-dimensional model that they can turn around, zoom in on, zoom out, in a way that's not possible with printed stills. With SolidWorks, everyone we visit is able to download that and look at the models we've been working on and then give us instant feedback but it really works best when you bring a physical form, when you bring something people can touch, feel, and experience. And for us, that's really critical because we're communicating across cultures and across languages. And so for us to be able to show something visual, there's less of a leap of faith that we're asking the people to make. So with SolidWorks, we're able to actually create concepts, do a solid model of that, and continuously change that design. With Firefly, we've just passed 100 infants successfully treated, which is a great milestone for us. And we're currently working on setting up manufacturing in Southeast Asia uh, to service Southeast Asia and beyond with the device. I think that once you get into design and engineering as a practice, it's really hard to look around at the world and take it as it is. You see all of these opportunities to make life better. The opportunity to apply design in a context where there are so few resources and there are so few opportunities. We could spend the rest of our lives doing this. SolidWorks has been a wonderful tool for helping us to tell the story so that we can all imagine the better result.